Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. I'm Dr. Lisa. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you about uh, doing stepwise regression in R. Hopefully you've watched the video on the theory behind stepwise regression. Stepwise reg regression is when you have a number of variables and you're trying to determine whether some or all of them are uh, predictors of your master variable. <clears throat> so the example I'm going to do today uh, is one that I do all the time because I'm an expert on PCBs. And when you measure PCBs out in the environment, there's a good chance that they came from the aerochlores, which are PCB formulations that were manufactured by Monsanto. So if in the, you're in the United States, Monsanto was basically the only manufacturer of PCBs. And so when you find PCBs in an environmental sample, there's a good chance that they are a mixture of all of the different aerochlores that Monsanto created. They created different formulations. And so this is a nice problem for stepwise regression because not all of the aerochlores are necessarily present, but some of them might be, and you want to know which ones. So for this code example, I'm going to use some data from the state of Oregon where the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality and, and other people measured PCBs in sediment. So I'm gonna, first thing I always do, of course, is put in some code up here that explains what I'm doing, <laughs> that this is a stepwise regression. Uh, and the other thing that we're gonna do in this video, which I hope will be very useful, is that we're gonna teach you how to do a loop. So we're gonna do a stepwise regression, but we're gonna do it in a looped fashion. So you can do it over and over and over again with, with a few simple lines of code. So the first thing we also do is load up all of our packages. Notice I've accidentally got a dplyr in here twice. It happens. Okay, so I'm gonna load up my packages like I always do. Next thing I usually do is uh, input some data. So I'm calling that data the multiple linear regression input. And there it is. So there's my MLR input. And you can see I've constructed this data file so that here's the different error cores across the top. And notice some of them are duplicates. So these are two duplicate measurements. And these are all of the different chemicals, the different PCB congeners that you might find in these different aerochlores. So these are measurements that were done by a contract lab to just characterize the different aerochlores. And then over here, starting in column, if I hover over this, it'll pop up here, column 13. That's where I start having data. So this is lines of data. And you can see these all end with ORDEQ because it's the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality. And I have lots and lots and lots of samples here. And I'd like to be able to do this multiple linear regression on all of them. And I don't want to have to do it one at a time. I want to write a loop. So one thing that's helpful to do is to figure out what are the names of the columns of data that I just input. And they show up down here. This is important because if I look at the Excel file or the comma separated value file that I imported, instead of all these periods here, I had spaces. When you import data into R, it doesn't like those spaces. And it will do all kinds of things to get rid of them. Uh, it also doesn't like certain characters like slashes and things like that. So the, the name that you gave something in the input file is not necessarily going to be the name of the thing in R. R might rename it. So it's useful to run this little uh, little utility here to get the names. And note that I can also say, okay, what's the name, not of the, all of the names, but what's the name of just column number two here? And by putting the two in brackets, I can get the name of column number two. And this is important because we need to know the names of those columns when we write our step function. So the first step function, the first stepwise uh, regression I'm going to do, I'm going to call it simple number one, because it's a simple one and it's the first one. I'm using this step function. I'm doing a linear model. My data is coming from this thing called MLR input. And then here's the actual equation that I'm trying to regress. I'm going to take whatever is in column 13 of that MLR input. Remember, that was the first column with data in it. And I'm going to regress it against these other columns. So these are all just names of columns that I got from down here. It's part of the reason I printed them out. So this is my Y variable, and these are all of my X variables. Now, in a stepwise regression, you can either go forwards or you can go backwards. If you go forwards, you are starting with one variable and then adding the second and the third and the fourth and seeing whether all of them are statistically significant. Uh, if you go backwards, you start with all the variables and you eliminate one at a time to see which ones are significant. 
I'm going to go both directions so that I, I get the most robust answer of what is statistically significant in my regression and what is not. So that's what this line of code is doing. Very simple, really just, I mean, it's, it's spread over three lines, but it's really one line of code. Notice also, of course, in R, you can put the breaks in here. So even though that this is only, this is one line of code, one line of code, uh, by putting the breaks in here, I can see it on, on my screen better. And those don't matter. They're just there for visually to help me see things better. And that's one of the nice things you can do in R. So I hit run and here's my output. Okay, and so you can see it started by running the model and it gets, it uses all of the different X variables. I had five X variables, it tries all of them and it calculates an AIC. I don't know if you remember from previous videos, but the AIC is the, and I'm going to mispronounce this, a, a Kaiki information criterion. So this is an, a, a way of determining the goodness of fit um, and it, it's really useful. It's better than R squared, for example, uh, because one of the things it does, it deals with the trade-off between the goodness of fit and the simplicity of the model. Meaning that, you know, whenever you're doing a model, if you add another variable, you're probably going to get a better fit because you got more degrees of freedom. Of course, you're going to get a better fit, but you're making the model more complicated. Is that really worth doing? And that's what AIC is trying to help you do. It helps you deal with the risk of overfitting, meaning having too many variables. And some of them are really not meaningful or useful. So this step function in R is using this AIC, this Akaiki information criterion to determine the best model. So it starts out at minus 1262.74. Here it goes up a little, or actually technically goes down because it's negative, 1264.67. 1266, 1267. So you can see the model is getting better. And then in the end, it comes up with it, what it considers to be the best model. Uh, it's a little hard to understand this. And so what I'm going to do is do a summary of the model here. And there's my summary of the model. And that what basically what the model is saying is that only two of those five error chlors are actually present in this sample. Okay, and notice that they're also giving me a p-value and one of these p-values is not significant. One of them is highly significant. So really this sample is mostly resembling error 1254. Um, and then, so this is, if you remember from previous videos, the summary is nice to look at on screen, but it may not be particularly helpful if you're trying to export this information into some other file. For that, we might wanna use the tidy function. If we run that, it looks very similar, but this is actually putting it into what's called a tibble, which is making it a little bit easier if you want to export it. Okay, so there you go. Easy peasy. Uh, one other way, though, that we could do this, and this is important because we're moving toward the idea of using a, a loop, is instead of saying the, the titles of the columns of data, we could just indicate them by the numbers here. Right, And we've already done that for the Y variable. We've said that's the Y that's in column 13. And so now you're starting to see that if I wanted to change and now do my regression on column 14, all I would have to do is increase this number. Step this number up to 14 and 15 and 16 and just keep rerunning the step reg stepwise regression. Uh, and so if I run this simple model number two, again, this is basically one line of code that's split across three lines, I should get essentially the same thing. And I can prove that to myself if I do the, the uh, summary again, you see that now it's just calling it ML in part, MLR input number eight. But again, we have one that's highly significant and one that's really not that significant. So you get exactly the same results because you're doing the same thing, you're just giving these error chlors different names. And that is really important when we come to the loop function, because then you can, again, you can start to update those numbers however you want. So when we are going to do a loop, we always start with this for i in, and then you tell it the number of loops. Uh, we know that the first column of data that has, you know, the first column in our data frame that has actual data in it is number 13. And I counted and there's 69 of them. We could also do something like a length function here, say, you know, from six from, from 13 to length of that file and have it just run all the way to the end. There's different things we could do here. But we start with this four and we're gonna take this variable i and we're gonna step it up from 13, 14, 15, et cetera, up to 69. 
And then we start with the squiggly bracket and we have to close our squiggly bracket somewhere. In this case, our squiggly bracket doesn't close until all the way down here. Now, when we do this, uh, we're gonna run through some lines of code. First thing I'm gonna do is create this thing that I'm called factors and that's the names of my multiple linear regression input for column I. So in other words, that's the data that I'm regressing, the name of that column of data that I'm regressing. And I don't need that to do the stepwise regression, but I need it at the end when I'm trying to export all this information, I need to know which variables go with which, which samples. So I'm calling it factors. I don't know where I got that name, but it's fine. Then I'm going to run the model. I'm calling it now model both because I'm going both forward and backward. And note that within my loop, I'm going to put in this function called try. When you're doing a loop and you're looping through lots of data, there's always the chance that one of those is going to go bad. Any one of those many steps could go bad. And when that happens, the whole loop will crash. And you don't want that to happen. You'd like it to say, okay, my bad, that one didn't work, but then go on to the next thing. And that's what try does. Try says, just, just skip this one and go on to the next if it doesn't work. So I put I put this whole step function just like I had above, but I put it within a set of parentheses and I put it within this try function so that if it fails, it fails. You just move on to the next thing. Uh, and then the rest, so that's the model. That's really all there is to the model, to running the multiple linear regression. The rest of this is exporting the data in a format that makes some sense to me because I'm going to run a lot of these regressions. I can't be having table after table like this, tibble after tibble. That's too much information. I need to condense it in a way that makes a little bit of sense. And so I'm going to do that by creating something that I call my ID column. And that is going to be the factor, the, the, the sample that I was regressing. And I'm going to repeat it as many times as I get coefficients. See, one of the tricky things is that with the, with the stepwise function, you have five X variables, but not all of them might be significant. So the output could range anywhere from zero to five coefficients long. And so I'm just telling it to repeat the, the ID, the, the name of the sample, as many times as it needs to, to match the number of coefficients that get spit out by the model. And then I have to uh, create some data frames here where I take the tidy, right, the output of the model using the tidy function, and I dump it into a data frame that I'm calling data both. And then I take data both and I bind onto it the ID column. So this line of code right here is outputting the, the coefficients and stuff that the model generated. And then this line of code is binding that up with the ID of the sample, the sample ID. So I can keep it all straight, which coefficients go with which sample. Then it creates something called data new. And I bind onto that the old data new with this thing that I call data both, right? So now what I'm doing, this I've done, this has created one, one output for one sample. And now I'm going to keep adding that output for one sample into this thing called data new. So the old data new gets added onto it, the next data both. So you just keep adding another sample onto the end. And uh, I also put the R squares into a different data, data frame. You could put them in the same one, but I put them in a different one. I just liked it this way. Where I'm doing the same thing. Here's the factors, here's the model. Um, and then I'm binding, so this is for one sample right here, and then I'm binding onto it um, each new uh, each new sample as it comes along, I'm binding onto the end of something called R squared data. So when all is said and done, I'm going to be writing to a file the data new and the R squared data, and that's going to give me all the information I need about my stepwise function. But, you know, some of this is maybe more than you need to know, but the point is, we're doing a loop, we're looping through many lines of many columns of data, and we're outputting in this into a format that's gonna make some sense to me. Notice again, try just like up here, I use the try function. Try function has a parentheses. So this parentheses ends all the way down here. And then I have my brackets and the brackets end all the way down here. So you always have to match those up. That's the hardest thing about doing the loops is getting all the damn brackets to match. All right, and the other thing you notice is that up here, I had to create some empty data frames. You have to create these before you run the loop. If you don't, the loop will say, I can't find the data frame. So you have to create it first. And so I'm just creating an empty, that's why the parentheses are empty here. I'm just creating an empty data frame so that it exists and the program can find it. So now if I run all of this, bada bing, bada boom, we should get 
let's see, it's going to run through all of my samples and get a new, uh, see, it, it doesn't like the fact that I use data frame. I should use Tibble instead, but that's that's a warning, not an error, meaning that the code still executed fine. And you can tell that from what's going on up here. So here's my data new right here. So this is all of my samples. And then here's all the, the uh, terms, so the intercept and the different uh, Aerochlor terms. And then here's the actual estimate of the coefficient, the magnitude of the coefficient, and then the standard error, the statistic, and the p-value. Hopefully, all of these p-values should be significant in theory. Well, this one's close. See, this one's 0.15. So, it, so if you're using p.05 as your criterion, that would not be statistically significant. But under the AIC, which is what we're using the step function, it is statistically significant. There are other functions in R that could let you do all of the stepwise regression using something else as your criterion, using R squared or using p-value or whatever. But I like this one. OK, so this is great. This is fine. Um, but maybe this is not quite what I was looking for in terms of an output, because I would like a table that shows me each sample and which error cores were statistically significant for that sample. So this is what I would call long form data, where the same sample is appearing in here multiple times. And what I would like is wide form data, where each sample is one line. So that's an easy thing to do in R. I just reformat it using pivot wider. And I'm saying, OK, the data is coming from that thing I created called data new. The ID columns are coming from the thing called ID column. That was the sample ID. And the term was the thing, whether it's the, the you know MLR input number six or the intercept or whatever. So those are the ID columns. The values are coming from the estimate. That's the value of the coefficient. And the names are from this thing called term. So I can run this line of code. And that creates my new nice table. And here's my nice table. So here's each sample. And then here's the intercept and the five uh, error clores, and it's showing me which ones are significant. And if they're not significant, it just gives me an NA value. So that's a little bit more useful what I wanted to see in my output. So the couple of lessons here, one is that you can do a stepwise regression. It's not very difficult in R. Two, you can do it in a loop. So you can do many, many columns of data. You know, R can handle huge data files, bigger than Microsoft Access, for example. Um, you, know, you can handle gigabytes worth of data in R, no problem. So you could do this on hundreds and hundreds of samples. Um, third is that you can output the data in any format you want. It just takes a little bit of sort of finessing to figure out what goes where and how to bind it all together, but can totally be done. And then when we're finished, we could write these this nice table and then also my R squared data because I wanted that. I could just write those to files run those lines of code, and those now will appear. I told them exactly where to put them. I put them under R code, Oregon sediment, stepwise, nice table, Oregon sediment, stepwise, R squareds. So that's how you could do several cool things, do a stepwise function, do it in a loop, and output the data in a cool format.